Hey there guys, I'm Renee. I am the owner and artist behind Chicly Reclaimed Decor and welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you how I upcycled a salvaged cabinet door, including the glass, and crafted this aged Baroque style design. I'm gonna be going over from start to finish how I created the faux aged mirror, as well as how I redesigned this plain frame using Iron Orchid Designs molds including their newly released angelic tapers mold. Then I'm gonna be going over how I added layers of texture and paint, as well as a crackle effect to simulate an aged and rusted look with hints of patina to create this old world inspired paint finish. So if that is something you're interested in learning, stick around because that is what I will be going over today. But before we begin, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new tutorials. So to create that aged and distressed looking glass style mirror, I used looking glass spray paint and a vinegar distressing technique. I have shared this with you here before. So if you're already familiar with this technique and have it down pat, then go ahead and look down in the description and skip to the video chapter that you're most interested in watching. So I have my cabinet door and I have it flipped upside down so I can reach the back of the glass. And I'm simply just taking this vinegar and flicking it on in random areas. On this day, the lighting wasn't the best. and I know it's difficult to see. So here is a look really quickly at another project to see exactly what I mean by flicking the vinegar on in random spots. There should be pools and splotches of vinegar on your piece of glass before you spray it down with the looking glass spray paint. This vinegar is basically working as a resist. So basically anywhere the vinegar is on this piece of glass, the spray paint will not be able to adhere to it, hence the distressed and aged look. Once you have a good layer sprayed on, you're gonna to need to let that sit and dry before you come through with a paper towel and you're gonna lay it over top and tap gently to soak up and remove the vinegar. With this technique, you could stop there if you're happy with the distressed marks that you have, or you can just continue on by layering the vinegar with the looking glass mirror spray over top to create just the amount of distressing that you would like. And here are the results after I was all done. As you can see, it definitely has that antiqued looking glass effect. Next up, we are going to be adding a rust patina inspired paint finish to the back of this mirror to finish off this aged design. I'm gonna be using this beautiful metallic brown. This is Walnut by Paint Couture Paint. And I'm going to be just dabbing this over the entirety on the back of this piece of glass. You can choose whatever color suits your preference, but I chose this color because this brown has kind of a reddish hue to it, which is going to really give it that um, rust, and the metallic element is going to give it that patina. So perfect for the look that I'm trying to achieve. Just keep in mind that you are painting over glass, so it is going to take a couple coats to get that full coverage that you want. And I'll flip this over here in a second to give you guys a peek of what the finished aged antiqued mirror will look like. Um, but I actually like to paint this entirety um, with that metallic brown, and then I'll come back once that's dry and I'll paint over it with a solid brown color before giving it a good top coat to seal it in place. For this part of the redesign, we are going to be using this beautiful trimmings mold by Iron Orchid Designs, as well as their newly released Angelic Tapers mold, which I am over the moon in love with the detail and versatility of this mold. It's not just for Christmas decorating, folks, and I'm gonna show you why here in just a few minutes. I'm gonna be using DOS Air Dry Clay to cast my moldings. And out of the five options available on that silicone mold by IOD, I chose this trim molding in particular because I love all the intricate ornate scrolls and the floral accents. I'm making sure to dust my mold with cornstarch before I begin, so that way I can easily remove this mold once I'm done. I'm gonna take my clay and I'm gonna roll it into a nice long tube, and then I'm gonna go about the process of pushing it into this mold. 
I chose to work with clay in particular for this project because it does have a tendency to shrink and crack, which is an aspect that I already wanted to incorporate into this design. So this is just gonna add to the aesthetic. As you can see here, my mold is pushed into place and I'm simply going about the process to remove any excess. You can use your fingers to do so or you can use something that has a straight edge like I'm doing here. Then I'm gonna flip the silicone mold over, knead the back of it and let gravity assist me in removing this molding. The nice thing here is that you're going for an aged shabby chic inspired design. So if you've got some jagged edges on your moldings, don't fret over it. It's just gonna help add to the, the aesthetic like I was talking about earlier. And we are gonna be coming back once this is all dried to add some texture. So we'll be able to add to and maybe even cover up some of those imperfections to help blend them in and create a cohesive design. The one thing I love about these IOD trimming molds in particular is the ends are designed to link up and it just creates a more continuous looking piece of trim, which is something that I absolutely love. I'm gonna continue with the process of casting these molds and adding them to the frame on this cabinet door. And you may be wondering what I'm going to do about this connection here in the corner. Well, I'm not gonna worry about it because as you'll see later on down the road when I'm designing, I'm going to be taking that angelic tapers mold and I'm gonna be laying that directly over top. So that is going to conceal and or disguise that little connection there. So stay tuned because I'll be going over that here in just a bit. But before we move on to that step, I just wanna show really quickly that I like to use Type Bond Quick and Thick to glue my moldings into place. I like to put a nice, thin layer onto the back, and then I'm just going to put it where I want it on my design. So for the next part, we're gonna be following that same process to cast these angelic taper molds. And we're gonna be layering them, like I said, over what we already have down. So I had to open a new bag of clay for this project. So a quick tip that I have for you to keep your clay from drying out is I will put mine in a gallon side storage bag and then I will mist the inside with water to keep the moisture content high and to keep it in good condition ready to use for my next DIY project. As you can see, I followed the same process to dust my mold with cornstarch before adding my clay, and then I'm gonna turn it over to easily remove it. Just wait until you see the up close shot on this mold, guys. The detailing is absolutely beautiful. Definitely reminds me of Baroque, old world style architecture, perfect for this project. So as you can see here, I'm going to be laying this angelic tapers mold directly over top here, and it is going to conceal and disguise that top trim mold. And then I just continued on with that process of casting these molds and then gluing them in place on this cabinet door. The one thing I love about molds is that they are completely customizable, which is something that I did here for the bottom mold work on this design. As you can see, I just used the top half of the angel and then I set it in place and I cut off the excess until it was even with the frame. Then I came back through and I cast the taper portion of the molding and I added it onto the top of the angel, so basically the exact opposite of how the mold is originally. And I also cast three little heads and I added those to the middle on this design. A lot of French Baroque architecture has a religious element to it and so does this. I was inspired by the Holy Trinity, especially with the Christmas season coming up. And here's an up close look at all the mold work once it was all glued into place. And stick around because next up, we are gonna be going over how to layer texture and paint and how to use a crackle effect to achieve an aged old world style paint design. But before I start doing any of that, I'm going to put down this cardstock 
on the mirror side of things for easy cleanup once I am done. Next up, I'm gonna be adding some texture to this design, something I absolutely love to work with, and I'm gonna be using Paint Couture's embossing medium to do so. This is a smooth acrylic plaster, and I absolutely love it for this technique. But as an alternative, you could add a texture powder additive, such as salt wash, to your paint um, to create a similar look. Okay guys, so I'm gonna be using this product to create two different types of texture. Remember, you can do the same thing with salt wash added to paint. I have dipped my chip brush into the product and I am dabbing or stipling onto the piece to create these peaks. For the second type of texture, I'm simply going to brush this product on in long strokes, similar to the technique of faux wet linen. My inspiration behind these two different types of texture is uh, simply just looking at something that's aged. Not uh, all the paint seems to chip or come off in the same way. Uh, some gets more like crumpled looking. Um, others will look like someone slopped on a large amount of paint and it's raising off of the actual wood. So that's what I'm trying to mimic here with these two different types of textures. As I spoke about earlier, I'm also using this product and the texture to kind of conceal some areas where I may not be happy um, with the imperfections in the design. So um, on the areas here where I put the trim together and it kind of shrank and there was a gap, I just added a large amount of embossing medium there. And I was going to add some heavy texture to these areas right here where my trim is not perfect on the edges and it kind of cracked. But I really actually ended up liking that aesthetic with this texture added. As far as the placement of the rest of this texture, there really is no rhyme or reason. Just use your own artistic discretion as I've talked about many times before. You can add it heavier in some areas and lighter in others. You could even leave some places bare. It's up to you and the look that you're going for. This is another example of using the texture to disguise an imperfection. The clay shrank pretty heavily here in the corner, so I'm just laying down a heavy amount of the texture right there. I absolutely love that laying down texture can add an element of age to a freshly painted piece. The magic behind this old world style paint finish stems from the layers. Now that we have our first layer down, the texture, we're ready to move on to layering on the paint. For my base color on this piece, I'm gonna be doing what I call a dirty blend of two different tones of green, a dark and a light. And what I mean by a dirty blend is this blend does not need to be perfect. I just want this paint to look like it's faded in different areas over the years. I'm going about the process of dabbing on this darker green toned paint. And I'm using a dabbing motion for two reasons. Firstly, to make sure I get into all the little nooks and crannies on this ornate molding. And secondly, using a dabbing motion is an easy way to blend these two similar colors together. Right here is a good example of the technique. So I am laying down the lighter green and now I'm gonna come in with my darker green and I'm just doing a dabbing motion right there where the two combine. And then I'm just continuing on using that dark green paint. And I'm just toggling back and forth between these two colors, blending as I go along. Quite a few of the products that I'm using here today in this tutorial are by Paint Couture Paint Company. And I will put a list of those products used and where they can be found down in the description below, just in case I've inspired you to pick up a paintbrush and do a little creating of your very own.
Next up, I'm going to be using a nice creamy white color. This is Candlelight by Paint Couture Paint, and I'm using a chip brush again, and I'm gonna be doing a mixture of painting and dry brushing this paint color onto this design. Here, to get some added texture, I am rotating my paintbrush from side to side as I dab on my paint. And now I'm gonna be dry brushing to bring out all that amazing texture. So I'm gonna have very little paint on my paintbrush and I'm simply just gonna brush it over those areas and it'll catch on the raised elements and bring them to the forefront. For the front, where all the mold work is, I'm gonna continue with the same process of dry brushing to bring out all that amazing texture that we added using the embossing medium. I'm also following that by dry brushing over the mold work as well. It's just amazing how this technique just really brings out all the detail in these beautiful moldings. And again, here in a minute, you'll see that I'm gonna be using that one back and forth twisting of my paintbrush just to add some differentiation in the paint coverage and the texture. And I'm just gonna to toggle between those two techniques to layer on this white paint. For the next step in this old world inspired paint finish, we are going to be laying down a variety of paint colors. Some of these colors that I'm gonna be using are custom mixes and some are already pre-made. My inspiration behind this color palette actually came from this photo right here. I pulled from the blues, the pinks, the grays, and the greens. And that is exactly the colors that we are going to be laying down here. I'm going to be starting with this very light blue color. This is Angel Eyes by Pink Tour Paint. And I am going to be brushing this on in random areas onto this design. By layering on these different colors of paint, I'm hoping to mimic the variegated faded colors like that in the photo I shared with you earlier. Keep in mind with this painting technique that you're not going for full coverage. You want the different layers of paint to be showing through. Next up, I'm gonna continue with that process of layering on paint using a gray color called Driftwood by Paint Couture Paint.
For the next step in this paint process, I'm going to be adding the rust and patina aspect to this paint finish. I am taking a rust color and I am just brushing it over areas randomly on this design. And yes, I am finger painting, um, but I was just kind of going with the flow at this point. Um, you could use a brush and get the same effect. Here in just a minute, it's gonna zoom in and you'll be able to see that I'm adding it onto the edges. And then I'm running my figure over top of the texture. And that is basically catching like a dry brushing effect and adding a rust and patina element to the middle here. The next step in aging this paint involves the process of layering paint on and then taking it off. Again, I dabbed on some of that custom rust color and I'm dipping a paintbrush into some water and then I'm just brushing and dabbing that paint and blending it into the surrounding area. I want it to look as if the rust is kind of dripping down the side on this frame. So I'm following that same process. I've added the rust color. I'm using a damp uh, paintbrush and I am using long brush strokes to again blend that paint into the paint, but this time down the side. Again, I'm trying to mimic a drippy rust type look. Next up, I'm going to be coming in to age this piece with another custom mixed color. This is one of my favorites to mix up. It's a really heavy plum color with um, really rich red undertones to it. So I'm taking it and I am dabbing it into the angel's wings here. And I am going to take a damp uh, brush and I am going to again be kind of dabbing it and watering that paint down and blending it into the rest of the design and then any um, leftover I'm simply going to dab off with a rag. Now at this stage you can use your own artistic discretion as to how much you leave on and how much you take off. Say you put too much on and you want to remove more, you can either use a baby wipe, a lot of people find that helpful, but what I like to do as this is a water-based paint is I will just spray it down with a misting bottle and then wipe the excess off with a rag. So again, I'm going to follow that same process here to add that custom mixed um, patina, what do we want to call it, plum, plum patina? We'll call it the plum patina color. And I'm just going to follow that same process. And this time I'm going to be sharing with you the technique that I just described. I'm going to be misting this with a um, fine misting bottle and then wiping off any excess from there. Next up, I'm going to be toggling between dry brushing the rust color on and then the plum color. The last color that I layered on here was the plum. So now I'm gonna be coming through and dry brushing with the rest. And remember, I'm just creating layers between toggling between these two colors. So now I'm gonna be coming back through with that plum color and I'm gonna be dry brushing. And I'm concentrating this technique specifically on the areas where I want there to appear a rust effect. As I spoke about earlier, and as you have witnessed by now, the magic behind this paint finish is patiently adding layer by layer. And what's a Baroque design without a little gold? So for the last um, paint that I'm going to layer on here, I am going to be dry brushing this beautiful yellow gold over the entirety of the mold work on this piece. And remember those areas earlier where we dry brushed some of that rust color over the texture? Well, I'm going to do the exact same thing with this gold mine color. I know it's kind of difficult to see, but here in just a minute, I'm gonna show an up close shot of what this looks like when I'm all done. And you'll really be able to see all that patina that we added right there.
The next step in the process is totally optional, but I just absolutely love the finishing touch that a two-part crackle adds to this aged Baroque design. So I'm going to be using, like I said, a two-part crackle. This is by Pink Couture Paint, and I am going to be simply layering on step one, section by section. Now this step one is called size because you determine how big or how little your cracks are by how much of this product you add to your piece. So if you want larger cracks, you're going to add a nice thick layer of this onto your design. And if you want more like fine line cracks, you will just need to add a nice thin layer. I want my cracks to be very large and pronounced. So I'm adding a thick layer onto the angelic taper molds and I am kind of varying it when it comes to the angel heads in the middle. On some of them, I'm going to add a thick amount, and then on the rest of the areas, I'm going to add a thin. I'm also going to brush on, a, again, a varying amount of this product, some areas thin and some thick, right on these wood beams. And I'm working a section at a time here because this product is clear, so you really do need to remember where you have put it. Once that product has become tacky to the touch, about an hour or so, you are ready to brush on your crackle step two. And you simply just brush this on right over the areas where you added that step one. Once that product has had time to dry fully, I'm going to be accenting these cracks by using a glaze. This is by Pink Couture and it's Amber Honey. It's one of my favorites to use. And I'm simply just gonna brush this over the areas where we added that crackle effect. And then I'm going to wipe off any excess. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna get into all those cracks and really accent them and bring them to the forefront. And here is some up close video and photos of the finished Baroque inspired design that we created using a faux looking glass effect. And we redesigned this frame using iron orchid designs molds. And then we created this beautiful old world style paint effect by layering texture and paint. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd be interested in more tutorials where I share my painting tips and tricks, then please subscribe for more DIY content. I hope you enjoyed seeing the process of how I took a plain old cabinet door and transformed it into this beautiful and unique Baroque inspired piece of art. And I hope I've inspired you to pick up a paintbrush and do a little creating of your very own.